Good morning, everyone. My name is John, and I am with Midrange TCG. And today, I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple of cards going into the new standard rota uh, post rotation on October fifth. And those two cards that I'm going to be talking about are the Iridon Bringer and Resplendent Angel. Uh, so, as you guys know, uh, the last time Iridon Bringer was in standard as a potential uh, meta deck was in blue white control. Uh, and she was pretty much a finisher that came out on turn five and ended the game in four turns. Now, going into the new standard, I think what's going to happen with white, uh, particularly with Resplendent Angel and with Lyra Dawnbringer, is that we're going to see a massive uh, resurgence of Lyra Dawnbringer just because right now uh, control is a very strong set, but we are losing cards like Disallow, we are losing cards like Cast Out, and these uh, essentially improve the consistency of being able to play white blue decks and so once we're once we lose these cards i believe the the package of removal for white goes down significantly i mean if you look at it right now post rotation the only white cards left for removal that we'll have is settle the wreckage we will have um cleansing nova which will be the replacement for fumigate uh but the thing is we don't get the life gain and so if we don't get the life gain um, it makes it harder for us to survive that mid game or the early game, especially when we're getting pushed by cards like uh, uh, an example or Shaker Kenra or Hazaret or these cards that just hose uh, Control players or punish them for just being uh, bad players. So going into the meta We're gonna have cards like seal away Ixalan bindings uh, baffling end So these will probably be like the consistent three cards that deal with the meta uh, as of right now pre um, Return to Ravnica Or excuse me uh, pre Guilds of Ravnica uh, block. So I think today I wanted to talk about Resplendent Angel and Lyra Dawnbringer. And the first card I wanted to talk about is Resplendent Angel. Now, um, Resplendent Angel has actually seen a bit of a lackluster play, uh, just probably because she's so easily dealt with right now. Like if we look at our current standard uh, format, <clears throat> we do have cards like Lightning Strike and a Braid uh, in red that sort of just get rid of her. Uh, we also have cards like Walking Ballista that are just pretty threatening. Uh, on the field right now like in black we have rask's contempts we have fatal push like a revolted fatal push which is pretty easy to get off as a trigger can actually kill a resplendent angel before we are able to resolve her ability um, other cards an example in white we do have cast out uh excuse me cast out uh in black we have cards like cast down we have cards um yeah so it makes it very hard to play her right now, especially also because we have to take into consideration uh, the potential for angels to be a thing in the format. And so if we're looking at angels, one of the other cards I wanted to talk about was actually Shalai, the Voice of Plenty. And so I think the biggest reason why Shalai is not being played right now is just because there's a lot of removal in the format. Um, like, straight, straightly put, that's just how it is. There's so much removal in the format right now, uh, it's very hard to play her. And uh, also paying four mana for a three-four flyer is not exactly amazing, so uh, I think we also have to take that into consideration when we do uh, play the cards. Um, so I believe with that, Resplendent Angel sort of becomes inherently worse. But we do have cards in the current cycle of rotation that I think people are missing out on, and I think some of those cards are cards such as a uh, such as Lyra Dawnbringer that can actually you know trigger Resplendent Angel's uh, ability to make to make angels. But I think one of the other things holding Resplendent Angel back is the fact that she's not so much of a win condition, or he, but Resplendent Angel is more of a win more condition. Like, if you really think about it. Same thing with, like, Lathis, right? If you look at Lathis, Lathis is a drag. It's a 6-mana, six 6-6 six, six flying dragon that uh, has the potential to win more, right? She just makes more dragons when she comes out. And uh, give me one moment. Let me see if I can find the card. Okay, so I don't have it on me, but yeah, like Lath, oh, right here. So Lath is, is a card. So she's a six mana six six flyer. Whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, make a five five red dragon creature token flying. So she pretty much just says win more, and I think that's the same thing that what a uh, what Corset twenty nineteen pushed with with a Resplendent Angel was the exact same thing. It was it wasn't such it wasn't as much of a win card as it was more of a win more card. <laughs> but as we see, like the devastating combo of having these three cards. Uh, out just in consecutive turns so going turn three resplendent angel to turn four shalai and turn five lyra dawnbringer can actually be pretty devastating because uh lyra dawnbringer does give other angels plus one plus one and lifelink and i think that's very important for cards uh for an angel tribal and i believe angel tribal could be a very potential thing because we do have cards like uh an example of that three mana uh, enchantment that gives specific archetypes plus one plus one and then also gives them vigilance which is actually gonna be really great 
uh, just tacking on another uh, another keyword to these angels, right? And so I believe they have the potential to be very good, but I don't know if Angel Tribal will actually remain to be a uh, competitive deck in the current format, uh, especially with how much removal is currently in the format. Uh, obviously, post-rotation, I think they'll get better. I think Lyra Dawnbringer will actually see a spike in play again. Um, obviously, she's down in price right now just due to the fact that she's not being played very often. She's more of a sideboard card, not so much a main deck win condition. But we have seen her uh, slowly make a resurgence in cards such as Mono White, where they are playing cards like a Johnny, um, along with cards like uh, the, Le the Leonin War Leader or other cards such as like Militia Bugler and just make these really small guys and just pump them out. Or just pump them with plus one, plus one tokens. Uh, so we, we definitely will see... Lyra Dawnbringer come back. I don't know if we'll see Resplendent Angel, but a really cool brew is just uh, working around the three mana into four mana into five mana curve. And I think this curve is actually very powerful uh, just because it can offer you some sort of, uh, pretty much like a bit of reliability, right? The the, the hardest counter is just, is play, the hardest weakness uh, to white is just being countered. Like straight up, it's just being countered. Like playing, playing a five mana and having it countered by an essence scatter does feel really bad. Um, so I think in that sense, um, it might not see very competitive play, but I think it definitely will see fringe play. Um, has the potential to be a very good deck. It also has the potential to be very good against aggro, especially because we do have cards. We do have we do have white creatures such as Militia Bugler. That's a three mana two three, and he's got a pretty decent body, and he gets to search for a Resplendent Angel off of his. Excuse me, not Resplendent Angel. He gets to search for a Mentor of the Meek off of his trigger. So, and uh, there definitely is some play that we can make between like sort of like a weenies deck and then splashing in some bigger bombs in order to uh, threaten lethal, right? Because Lyra Dawnbringer has the amazing capability, she has the amazing ability of being able to stabilize a game very quickly. First Strike, Life Lick, and Flying is definitely nothing to laugh at, and she gives other angels plus one, plus one. So having a Shalai, having a four or five Shalai, um, and having your entire board hexproofed except for her is is pretty good. It's it's actually considerably much better than people think, and I, I believe that going into... Uh, post rotation, post post Amon Kit and uh, and Kaladesh blocks rotating. Uh, this will definitely be a contender uh, for at least a tier two deck. And there are some potential brews that may come out uh, involving these three cards. And we also have to consider that uh, as cats are rotating, it's going to be definitely much harder to to play a white weenie deck. But we do still have cards like uh, Johnny's Pride Mate or Leon War Leader, which actually do benefit from the life gain aspect. So we can we can start with a with a board of creatures that generally are like two twos and three threes and four fours and just slowly build our way up into having a more more stronger uh, variants. So I believe Angel Tribal definitely going to be a thing in the upcoming format. Um, so yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about was just the fact that Resplendent Angel Shly and I believe Lyra Dondre are going to make a resurgence. Um, if you guys do like the content or if you guys have some suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Um, don't forget to like the video if you actually enjoyed it and subscribe on my channel. I am actually giving out some booster packs from Aether Revolt. I understand that the set is rotating, but, uh, I do have a bit of inventory left. So for every 10 patrons and or, uh, subscribers, I will be giving out a single pack of Aether Revolt. And I'm trying to hit the 25 subscriber mark right now, or the 25 subscriber slash patron mark. Um, so if you have the time, please feel free to check out my YouTube page. It's uh, youtube.com. Uh, my tag is midrange TCG. You could also check out my Patreon. That's also midrange TCG. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down in the sections below and I will definitely address them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.